Hi there. We continue in our Bible study in the letter to the church in Ephesus. We're in chapter 3 and we're going to be reading verses 1 to 13. Here in this passage, Paul is mainly talking to those who were Gentiles who had come to know Christ as their Savior in the church in Ephesus. Because he realized that God had called him to preach that gospel to the Gentiles. And now he's going to tell them about the second mystery. You'll remember a while back we thought about there's four mysteries in this uh, letter. The first mystery in chapter 1 was the mystery of God's will. And that was his purpose was that in the end Christ would be head over everything in heaven and on earth and under the earth. He would be head over everything. And that's the will of God. That's what his plans and his purposes are working towards. And now we're going to read about the second mystery. Remember again, mysteries in the Bible are not things for us to work out. They're things that God has kept hidden in the past from certain people. Usually the Old Testament prophets and such. But he has now revealed it. So it is revealed. We don't need to work it out. And we're going to read about that here today. Verse 1 of chapter 3. For this reason I, Paul, the prisoner of Christ Jesus for the sake of you Gentiles, surely you have heard about the administration of God's grace that was given to me for you. That is a mystery made known to me by revelation as I have already written briefly. In reading this, then you will be able to understand my insight into the mystery of Christ, which was not made, made, made known to men in other generations, as it has now been revealed by the Holy Spirit to God's holy apostles and prophets. This mystery is that through the gospel, the Gentiles are heirs together with Israel, members together of one body, and share us together in the promise in Christ Jesus. I became a servant of this gospel by the gift of God's grace given to me through the working of his power. Although I am less than the least of all God's people, the grace was given me to preach to the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ and to make plain to everyone the administration of this mystery which for ages past was kept hidden in God, who created all things. His intent or intention was that now, through the church, the manifold wisdom of God should be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly realms, according to his eternal purpose, which he accomplished in Christ Jesus our Lord. In him, and through faith in him, we may approach God with freedom and confidence. I ask you, therefore, not to be discouraged because of my sufferings for you, which are your glory. Probably most of those watching this video, if not all of you, are Gentiles. A Gentile is just someone who's not a Jew. So if you're, a, if you're not a Jew, then you're a Gentile. So this is very much for us. Today, even as we're talking together. And Paul was chosen by God to take the good news of the mystery of Christ to the Gentiles. That was a special job that he very much was proud of the fact that he was sent to the Gentiles. It cost him. And he said that in verse 1. He says, I'm a prisoner of Christ Jesus for the sake of you Gentiles because I'm sharing the gospel with you around the world. He says, no, I'm in prison for it. But in the last verse, he says, I ask you, don't be discouraged because of my sufferings for you, which are your glory. He said, don't, don't be discouraged about it. It's for you. I wanted to bring you the good news of the gospel. I wanted to bring you this mystery of Christ. And what is that mystery? Well, verse 6 made it very plain. This mystery is that through the gospel, the Gentiles are heirs together with Israel, members together of one body, and sharers together in Christ Jesus. 
We share in Christ. We're part of the same body. We saw that in our last study. To Jew and Gentile, but together in the body of Christ. And the church today is made up of Jew and Gentile together in the body of Christ. We don't have any virtue in ourselves, but we're in Christ. He accomplished that. As Paul goes on in verse um, 10, he talks about God's intention. What's God's intention for the church today? Well, in verse 10, he makes it clear. He wants the church to show in the heavenly realms, we're talking about the spiritual places, the spiritual world. We talked about that before. Evil forces, Satan, demons, but also angels and other... All those that are part of the spiritual realm, God wants them to know his wisdom and he's actually intending the church to show them that wisdom. Isn't that amazing? Us who God has saved, who God has made into his people, whether from Jew or Gentile background, he wants us to show this wisdom in heavenly realms. The wisdom of God, he goes on to say in verse 11, this wisdom according to his eternal purpose. And what is his eternal purpose? His plan, his will? That Christ will be raised to be head over everything. And he wants the church to show his plans, his purposes, his wisdom, how he achieved that. That's quite a responsibility for us as a church, isn't it? We need to show to, not just to the world around us, but to, to heavenly realms, the wisdom of God, all the different aspects of the wisdom of God. But there's something else that's very important here in verse 11. It tells us that he accomplished this purpose. God is accomplishing this purpose of putting Christ at the head, but he's accomplishing it through Christ. Notice that. He accomplished in Christ Jesus our Lord. And it was only through Jesus going to the cross, taking our sin upon himself, taking the punishment for our sin, that it's possible for Jews and Gentiles together to be saved forever, to be in heaven and to be under the headship of Christ there in heaven. It's through Christ he accomplished it. You can see why he thinks a lot of his son. Do you remember when he cried out from the heavens at the baptism of Jesus? This is my son whom I love. Amazing. The love of the father for his son because his son is accomplishing that which is the purposes and wills of God. Eternal purposes. Notice also in verse 12. In Christ and through faith in him we may approach God. So again, we can come to God, but it's through Christ. God is telling us in these verses, Christ is everything. He's all in all. Colossians writes about him. And Colossians writes this about Christ. He is before all things. In him, all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning and the firstborn from among the dead, so that in everything he might have the preeminence. This is who Christ is. Chapter 3 in Colossians, it says, Christ is all and is in all. And God wants us to know that he's everything. And we need to recognize that. And as we approach God, God says it has to be through him. It's through Christ that we approach him. In Christ and through faith in him, we may approach God. Jesus himself said that, didn't he? John 14, 6. I am the way. No one comes to the Father except through me. Hebrews chapter 4. I love it there where it talks about Christ being our high priest. And because of that, he says, let us then approach, because we have one there, Christ who is there, who's standing on our behalf, who is the mediator between us and God, as Timothy writes. Let us then approach the throne of grace with confidence, so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. 
I think that's tremendous that through Christ we can approach God with freedom and confidence. Jew or Gentile, the church. It's not amazing. God has set Christ up and he's going to ultimately in his final purposes to set Christ up head over everything. We need to acknowledge that now and we need to know and acknowledge that we get to God through Christ, not through any other ways. We don't get by praying to Mary or praying to the saints or by praying to pictures or idols or gold crosses or whatever. God makes that very clear way back in Exodus 20 when, he, when we read there of the commandments. We know the Ten Commandments. What is it God says? You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourselves an idol in the form of anything in heaven above or on earth beneath or in the waters below. You shall not bow down to them or worship them for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God. God says you come to me through Christ. There's no other way. And we need to stop disrespecting Christ and putting others on the equal with him. No. God says he's the one. I accomplish my plans through him and you come to me through him. But we can come with freedom and confidence. I love that. Oh, come to Christ and come to God through Christ freely and confidently approach the throne of grace God offers that to us in Christ let's pray Father thank you for the Lord Jesus Christ thank you for everything that he did and everything that he is thank you that he's precious to you and we want you to know that he's precious to us too. Thank you for the way that he made that we could come right into your presence. Oh, thank you for the Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Thank you. God bless you.